I'm a big fan of the Brave browser. Brave is a Chromium-based web browser that's privacy respecting. It comes with ad block out of the box. It's already baked into it. You don't have to go and grab a bunch of extensions to get good security and privacy settings with the Brave browser. And I also just love some of the other projects that the Brave company stands behind. For example, their Brave search engine has become really good these days. And recently, the Brave browser had an update where now they are shipping the Brave browser with a built-in AI assistant. This AI assistant is called Leo, and I just updated my computers to the latest version of Brave with the built-in Leo AI chat assistant, and I haven't tried it yet. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the Leo AI assistant in the Brave browser. I'm going to go ahead and ask it some questions, and let's see if these results are any good. So I've gone ahead and launched my Brave browser here, and to get to the Leo AI Assistant, there's a couple of different ways you can get to the, uh, the Leo Chat Assistant. You could do uh, the sidebar here, if you have the sidebar turned on, which I do, I have it uh, set to any time I hover over the right hand side of the browser, I get a sidebar, and the sidebar, by the way, you can have it always shown, you could have it never shown, or you can have it on mouse over, which is what I prefer. You could also move it to the left hand side of the browser if you prefer it on the left hand side of the screen for me. I like it on the right. And the AI assistant for Leo is this here. It's got a, it's almost like a little chat icon. It's essentially kind of like a, a word bubble and you can see if I hover over it, we get a little hint that that is in fact Leo. And if I click on it, this is the Leo prompt here at the bottom where I can go ahead and ask Leo a question. Another way you can ask Leo a question is you can simply go to the URL bar here and just type a question like what is the sum of 2 plus 2 you know question mark and you can see we have the little icon, the same icon for Leo right here. What is the sum of 2 plus 2? Ask Leo. And If I click that and we can go ahead and click it you can see the sum of two plus two is four. Now that of course is a very straightforward kind of question, a math problem. Let me go ahead and make this sidebar a little bigger because I'm gonna go ahead and ask the brave AI chat assistant here, Leo. I'm gonna go ahead and ask it some more uh, more nuanced kind of questions. I wanna see how it handles questions that are a little trickier, that are not so cut and dry. So let's go ahead and ask Leo some questions. How about world religion? How about what? are the similarities, if I can spell similarities correctly, between Hinduism and Buddhism. And if I ask Leo this, let's see what kind of response I get. I can get quite a detailed response. I get a list of, I guess, uh, five similarities between Hinduism and Buddhism. And you can see the response includes, number one, both originated in ancient India. That is true, so good job on that, Leo. Both believe in the concept of reincarnation and the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. Yeah, that is also true. Both emphasize the importance of spiritual practices such as meditation and yoga. All right, now so far so good. Both believe in the existence of a supreme being or ultimate reality although they have different names and concepts for it. I, I don't know that I would necessarily agree with that. I don't know that Buddhism, uh, typically when we talk about Buddhism, it's generally considered an atheistic religion. They don't really uh, believe like in a supreme deity, a creator kind of God or anything like that. Although there are different sects of um, Buddhism. Some of them do have uh, uh, some supernatural kind of beliefs, but they're not really uh, theistic in the way that Hinduism is a, a theistic religion. So I'm not, I'm not crazy about that answer. Number five, both emphasize the importance of compassion, nonviolence, and self-discipline. Yeah, I would say overall, pretty good answer to that. Let's give it another one, similar category. So let's say, is Confucianism compatible with Christianity? Question mark. And once again, we get... Uh, Rather lengthy response is going to get us give us another list this time of four points I guess where they e either are compatible or aren't. This is actually quite a bit on this answer. Uh, it looks like the first sentence uh, 
is Confucianism and Christianity are two distinct religions with different beliefs and practices. It's hard to reconcile them fully. Uh, they might be compatible. They might not. I really can't say. It's a lot of double speak, which I kind of expected to this kind of question. But we do have these key differences between Confucianism and Christianity. And this seems to be a pretty good list here. This is a list of all the things that exist in Christianity that Confucianism doesn't have. Essentially, uh, a belief in God, uh, the concept of, of salvation, uh, a different view of human nature. Of course, Christianity believes everyone is born with sin. Basically, we're born bad and, you know, we have to be saved uh, in some way. Where Confucianism is people are generally good by nature uh, and, of course, practices and rituals. Christianity, of course, has things like uh, funerals and baptisms, communions, and, of course, prayer. Where Confucianism is more of a philosophy. It's about how to behave in society. It's about being socially moral and a respectable person. And we've got quite a bit written here about in terms of compatibility, it's possible for individuals to draw on both, yada, 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 but probably not. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a lot of, you know, I kind of expected that kind of answer. It's kind of not the kind of question that you're going to get a yes or no. Is it compatible? Is it not compatible? You know, it's kind of a, one of those nuanced kinds of questions that sometimes can be tricky asking an AI. So I'm glad that I asked it this question, and I will say I'm pretty satisfied with the points it made. And I'm really glad that it, it, it actually didn't fall into a trap of actually trying to answer this question with a yes or no. Now let's ask Leo some tech-related questions. How about what are some YouTube channels that can teach me about Linux, Xmonad, and Emacs? Question mark. Obviously, we know the kinds of channels <laughs> that could teach on these topics. I would expect possibly my YouTube channel to be on this list, especially since there's not a lot of people that talk about things like Xmonad and Emacs especially, and to find a channel that actually talks about all three of those topics, Linux, Xmonad, and Emacs, I wouldn't expect a very long list, but it actually gave me a list of 10 channels. And looking at this, Linux Tutorial for Beginners. I've never heard of a channel called that, a Linux channel called Linux Tutorial for Beginners. Uh, Linux Mastery. Uh, Linux for Everyone is a real channel, but that's Jason Evangelo's channel. I don't know if he's ever made any content about Xmonad or Emacs, but he does make Linux content. But actually, I haven't seen a video of his in a long time. I'm not sure if he's still posting. He may be. Uh, Xmonad, <laughs> is there really a channel called just Xmonad? Maybe the Xmonad team has an official channel that they put content on. I don't know. Emacs Tutorials. I've never heard of a channel called that. Linux and Emacs. Max tutorials, Linux for beginners. These are really, really kind of generic kind of names. Are these even YouTube channel names? Because this would be weird for a list of 10 YouTube channels and all of them have such generic names. The only two that seem like real channels, I know Linux for everyone is a real channel and I know Tech with Tim probably is a real channel. I don't know that channel, but the fact that it actually includes someone's actual name but the rest of them, that is very weird. And the fact that, you know, it didn't find me, I also find kind of weird. Because I've probably done more videos on, not just Linux, I've, I've, probably, I've definitely done more videos about Xmonad and possibly even Emacs than most anybody on YouTube. Well, let me rephrase this. Give me just one YouTube channel that talks about Linux and Xmonad and Emacs. I just want to specify that. So it's somebody that talks about all three things. And all it did was give me Linux tutorials. Linux tutorials. That is such a generic name. Is that really a channel? Let me go to YouTube and let me do a search for Linux tutorials and see if there's an actual channel called Linux tutorials. You would expect it to actually show up if there was a channel called that. But no, you know, a lot of the same, you know, Linuxy channels that you would expect to be returned. Uh, but nothing called Linux tutorials. I don't think that's a real channel. So uh, asking the uh, YouTube questions definitely stumped uh, Leo here. But I do want to double check since it did suggest this as a YouTube channel. Maybe it is a real channel and I just can't find it. I will say give me the URL to that YouTube channel. 
He says, however, I cannot provide you with the URL of a specific YouTube channel. It is not appropriate to promote or endorse any particular channel or content. Well, how in the hell can you say that if you give me a list of the names? Why wouldn't you give me the URL? I mean, you're kind of promoting them if you go ahead and give me the name. That is ridiculous. Yeah, I that I don't agree with. I understand, you know, they're trying to be impartial. They don't want to push any particular content, any particular views on various subjects. But I, when people ask for URLs for something, you should just give it to them. I, I don't. It's like, well, no, you you need to go search for that on your own. I'm kind of disappointed in that response, especially in this situation, because I was actually asking for the URL to verify that what he answered in this question actually makes sense because I'm not certain that that YouTube channel is actually a real thing. But I don't want to, you know, be too negative on the Leo chat assistant. It is rather new. Obviously, it's going to give some false information. All of these chat assistants, all of these chat AI thingies like chat GPT, they're not perfect. It is really easy to ask them certain questions, especially certain questions sometimes where you know the topic well, you know, just to verify that they know the topic as well and a lot of times these chat assistants get things uh, way wrong now i do have this chat box here where it says enable suggested questions sure i'll enable it uh, i'm not sure why i would want to ask it to suggest a question for me but i'll go ahead and turn that on one thing here in the settings you do have different kind of ai models that you could switch to you can see they're locked though the default model is this one here llama 213b it's a general purpose chat but they do have this one that is an advanced chat and then this one here which is conversation and text generation both of these are locked if i tried to unlock them it's going to ask for payment leo premium so leo is free this ai assistant called leo is free but if you want to try some of the more advanced features available for leo you have to sign up for a premium account you can see this is usd 15 dollars a month overall my first impressions of leo are pretty positive i can see how this could become a regular part of many people's workflow is because uh, the thing with chat gpt going to a website and having to log in and all of that you know that's fine but i actually think this is much more convenient just having a little sidebar pop out or just typing a question in the url bar and actually getting that ai assistant to answer you right then and there now before i go i need to thank a few special people and of course i'm talking about the producers of this episode gabe james matt paul steve wes armor dragon commander angry george lee matthew methos nate erion paul peace arch and realities for less red prophet roland soul astry tools devler war gen 2 and ubuntu and willie these guys they're my highest tiered patrons over on patreon without these guys this quick look at the brave ai assistant known as leo it wouldn't have been possible the show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. If you like my work and want to support me, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys. Hey, Leo, which is better, tabs or spaces?